Welcome to Season 4, Episode 1 of Chris Cast with Chris Abraham. This is going to be a weird episode because I was just reminiscing and being uh, sentimental when I shared a link from a online novel that I've been writing since 2005 uh, in fits and recently it's only been kind of a dumping ground of ideas, but in the beginning it was, it, I thought it was really good. I really focused on it. I tried to get some interesting ideas down and from chapter one through chapter 14, maybe I actually did a recording. I started an audio book. So I'm going to upload all three MP3 files that I created. This is uh, Chris Abraham's 2005 voice. And so if it sounds different, uh, it was recorded back in 2005. It's an MP3. There are three um, files. There's a file of uh, episode or chapter one. And then I went and I did, I think, chapter 2 through uh, through 8, and then 9 through, I don't remember. I should, because I just downloaded a second ago, but it doesn't really matter. I thought I would just share it here in order. Um, the first MP3, the second MP3, and the third MP3. And in the show notes, I will link to where the um, where the site still is up. You can read it all the way. From the beginning, <clears throat> all the way through to recent posts that are not nearly uh, as interesting or focused or um, intentional. Uh, they are far less like there was a real voice in it. When I listened to myself do the reading, I was I was sucked right in. So I hope you enjoy this. This is out of the archives. Like I said, this is 2005 Chris. 2005 Chris lived on Capitol Hill. He lived uh, at 101 14th Street Southeast in the basement apartment there at 14th and A. And um, he was an early adopter. So there's that. All right. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it. This all comes from hillmole.com, H-I-L-L-M-O-L-E dot C-O-M. Thank you very much, and in, let me know in any comments and so forth what you think. Hillmole, an audiobook novel by Chris Abraham. Chapter 1. I was merely a dupe and a fool. No matter how independent you believe yourself, you are always part of some greater plan. Especially in Washington, where the fabric of intrigue is so tightly woven, there is no such thing as a civilian. Even those in the private sector do their part although this is mostly in the form of the unwitting dupe or incidental fool. It took me over 14 years to realize that I have been both an unwitting dupe and an incidental fool time and time again. Luckily, until now, I had always been both unwitting and incidental. This time, however, I was merely a dupe and a fool. Hillmole, an audiobook novel by Chris Abraham, Chapter 2 through Chapter 8. Chapter 2, Inside the Beltway. 
I have been working in the private sector in Washington, D.C. for 11 years. Never have I been an employee of the government, nor have I worked in the military. The closest thing I have ever had to a security clearance is the light review the Secret Service made in order to let me work as a contractor to the Treasury Department. Chapter 3. According to Plan The fool believes that plan is consensual, that one needs to be part of this rarefied cloth. Quite the contrary, one is part of the plan whether or not one is fully involved. Only those needing to know need know. The others are merely players, extras, who need know nothing. And there is a lot of cash spent on making sure that this is the case. But sometimes this doesn't quite go according to plan. Chapter 3 Adult Concerns Whose plan? I cannot tell you exactly. Certainly not what I believe my plan to be. Someone I knew to be spooky and in the world of intrigue once told me that the entire infrastructure was designed to prevent widespread panic, that the world was a very dangerous place. The majority of Miltel funds and resources are solely dedicated to calm us, to keep us children from being scared to sleep at night, to remain quiet and happy in a very dangerous world, in much the same way that parents are supposed to spare the child these adult concerns. We really don't want to know. Chapter 5. Privy to the Patterns But for some reason I began to know. I began to become privy to the patterns. I started to see the threads that make up the fabric. I began to notice that Dad was scared too. That this was a consensual drunken pub crawl. Chapter 6. Drunken Pub Crawl you know what a pub crawl is, I am sure. It is a night of debauchery when a group of friends plan to get together to go from bar to bar, from pub to pub, to drink through the night. The earlier in the night, it's a lot of fun, but as the night wears on, as everybody gets a little tight, things get a lot more challenging. People keep drinking, of course, but after a stay, it becomes important to move on to the next bar. Chapter 7 Crawling forward together. At some point during the night, people can barely walk straight. The only way to keep moving forward is to make sure all the crawlers are still together and still moving towards the next bar. The crawler not accounted for could break the entire outing into pieces. When a great big crawl is organized, there isn't anything that will keep the crawl from moving forward and there isn't anything that the organizers won't do to keep it going, for to fail is not acceptable. Chapter 8. The Blimp There is a blimp that swims above the city as if the beltway, our circle road, were the nosebleed seating of the city. It is new and clean and white, and it is called a security blimp. We don't quite know what the blimp does, or is for, but it is still for our security. Audiobook novel by Chris Abraham, chapters 9 through 14. Chapter 9 Bike Messenger. Since I've lived here in the city, the boundaries have become closer and closer, constricting. When I was in college in the district, I took a job as a bike messenger for WEX and hustled packages around the city on a bike. I took the job for fun but the facts was suffocating the industry. Even before the, quote, email attachment was even a glimmer, bike messengering as a career was dying. I was strong and fearless and smart. I was good at that job. I had carte blanche in my DC. I would carelessly hustle from the big K Street firms in a last minute five o'clock dash to the hill to score life and death legal in government timestamps. 
Sometimes I would be required to skulk through the deepest, darkest recesses of the capital to retrieve heavy GPO publications. Chapter 10, Pre-Internet in a Big Way. When I was a courier in Washington, it was pre-internet in a big way. Since lawyers are always doing shit last minute, I would end up shooting across the city on my bike with just minutes left, of course after flirting with the hot receptionist, only to reach the maw of a dun-colored official time-stamping machine seconds before it was put to bed. I made it every time, too, because there was nothing to impede me. The city was still open. It's called vulnerable now. These days, I can't imagine being able to get anywhere or any time as a bike courier. The security between me and that machine would be both daunting and amazingly time-consuming, if not impossible. Chapter 11, Washington Summers. Since I was concurrently a student at a private college, the hours on the bike were very freeing for me. They were liberating. The city was open and gleamed from all the marble. And although there were simple metal detectors, this was really just gatekeeping. Couriers have notoriously bad reps as potheads and criminals. Part of the reason became evident as I stood next to these sprung steel lifers as Senate guards routinely pulled pocket knives and ornate wooden or glass pipes out of their beat-up courier bags. No shit. Were these guys apprehended and sent to Gitmo? No. Their shit was confiscated, and they were allowed to make their delivery. Losing all their prized gear to the bin was enough of a lesson, I guess. Chapter 12. Capitol Hill was open door. In all honesty, you could easily move from building to building on the hill from the Capitol to the Senate and House office buildings. Of course, the White House has always had the doors closed, save official business and formal tours, but the Capitol and the surrounding buildings have always been open buildings. These people, the people therein, the senators, congressmen, and their staff, were always just down the street. I could drop off packages, then shoot into the Capitol cafeteria for some grub and some air conditioning before returning to the swampy mug of the Washington summer. 13. Security Eats Away I wonder how much time all this security eats away from the limited business that couriers have anymore. It must be a real investment now to get in and out of buildings. Even office buildings maintain security and the ability to enter at will seems to be well in the past. Chapter 14. Insidious Security Model and I always wonder how insidious the security model is, how intimate it is in my community. How close am I to someone who is keeping his eyes open? Thanks so much for listening. As I said before, this is Season 4, Episode 1 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. You can, of course, visit me at hillmole.com, but I am more regularly at chrisabraham.com, and you can email me at chris at abraham.com. You can text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. That's my real cell phone, so if you call it and I don't recognize your name, uh, it'll go to Google Voice and be translated and transcribed, and I will see it in my email and via text. I also have that connected, I think, to WhatsApp, to Signal, to um, all the other things. Uh, Telegram, and you can uh, reach me via messenger i'm at chris abraham on twitter 
I'm slash Chris Abraham on Facebook. I'm at, I'm Chris Abraham on YouTube. I am Chris Abraham on Instagram. And uh, that might be it. I would be happy to talk to you. Uh, please email me at chris at abraham.su or chris at chrisabraham.com, whichever. And I look forward to you reading through the rest of Hillmole, if you like, letting me know if you encourage me to do the rest of the chapters as an audiobook. If you'd like me to try to uh, format it into something you can read off of, uh, off of Amazon or some such thing like that, and all the other encouragements that I desperately need, uh, because I just need to get this did. I uh, thought I would share it out a little bit since uh, January 6th is, 6th is tomorrow, and people will be going completely crazy. So I just thought I would go ahead and uh, bring some of my insight into Washington, D.C., and the innate subterfuge and the way people are used and way uh, in the way that fools and innocents and naives and idiots and morons are constantly being exploited uh, without any level of consent. So on that note, I appreciate your time and I will talk to you soon. Mahalo. Thank you.